this is dr shankaraj from department of physics uh, in today's presentation i am going to discuss about numerical problems and nanotechnology so this is the problem set 2 on nanotech nanotechnology so first uh, five problems we have discussed in the first set in the next five problems i am discussing in today so, so sixth problem on nanotechnology is x rays of wavelength 1.5418 angstroms are diffracted by 111 planes in a crystal at an angle 30 degrees in the first order calculate the interatomic spacing so we need to calculate interatomic spacing so they have given inputs of wavelength they have given so wavelength lambda they have given uh, 1.5418 angstroms and they have given the planes 111 planes and the diffraction angle also they have given the diffraction angle is around 30 degrees and order of diffraction also they have given which is first order okay so we need to calculate interatomic interatomic spacing okay so first i will start with given so wavelength given as 1.5418 angstrom so we are going to convert this angstrom into meters so one angstrom is equal to 10 power minus 10 meters or 10 power minus 8 centimeters okay so we are converting into meters so 1.5418 into 10 power minus 10 meters order of diffraction is given as 1 right here first order and ang angle of diffraction is given as 30 degrees now we are going to use Bragg's equation so we know that Bragg's uh, is the first scientist who uh, who have used or uh, derived this equation okay so diffraction in crystals first he studied the diffractions in crystals diffraction in crystals so bragg studied diffraction in crystals and he found that diffraction occurs only when uh, it satisfies this condition is satisfied okay so that condition is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda only when this condition is satisfied only then there will be diffraction otherwise there will be no diffraction if there is diffraction you will see diffraction pattern right this is diffraction pattern okay. so diffraction pattern we will see only when this condition is satisfied in the diffraction pattern you will have intensity versus uh, angle or distance you will find in the center at in the center you will find maximum intensity and as you go away from the center you will see the intensity will decrease and it will go to zero at large angles or large distances okay so using this Bragg's equation for diffraction we are going to calculate the interatomic spacing this is not interplanar spacing this is interatomic spacing right so if you uh, yeah so if you take the crystal okay so if you take the crystal uh, here the yeah so here the interatomic spacing is actually the distance between the interplanar spacing okay so that is d right so this is actually a and the interplanar spacing is also so the plane this plane so this is our the interplanar spacing is this so that is also a so here a is equal to d okay so because this is a crystal yeah so now uh, yeah, using this equation, we are going to rewrite this equation for D because we want to calculate D. So, D is equal to N lambda by 2 sin theta. N lambda by 2 sin theta. So, lambda N they have given as first order. So, N is equal to 1 and lambda 1.5418 into 10 power minus 10, right? So, and yeah, so lambda is given here, N is given here 2 into sin theta, sin 30. So you, the answer is this 1.541 into 10 power minus 10 meters. Okay. So this is the interatomic spacing uh, in the crystal uh, between the planes, uh, 111 planes. So that is where the diffraction of X rays happen and the inter interatomic spacing is 1.541 into 10 power minus 10 angstroms. Okay, so we have used uh, Bragg's equation to calculate the interatomic spacing. Okay, let us go to the next problem uh, on nanotechnology. So, in this problem, we have used Bragg's equation to calculate uh, interatomic spacing, which, which is also equal to interplanar spacing here, right? Yeah, so let us go to the next problem. So, the next problem is 
an X-ray beam of wavelength three angstroms. An X-ray beam of wavelength three angstroms is diffracted from one zero zero planes of a cubic crystal. Again, so they have mentioned here exactly it's cubic crystal. The first order maximum is obtained for glancing angle of forty degrees. So maximum is at for first order uh, for glancing angle of forty degrees. Okay, so they have given uh, diffraction angle theta. Okay, angle they have given diffraction angle they have given they have given wavelength lambda, right? They have also given planes, right? So they are asking us to calculate determine the space of the reflection plane and also the volume of the unit set. We have to calculate the space of reflection plane and volume of the unit cell. So that is what we need to determine. Okay. So always we are starting with given. What are the inputs given for this problem? Okay. So the inputs given are first wavelength. Wavelength lambda is given as three angstroms. So again, I am converting this into meters. So we know that one angstrom is ten power minus ten meters, right? So three into ten power minus ten meters. Order of diffraction they have mentioned as first order maximum, so n is equal to one. Angle of diffraction is also given, that is glancing angle. Glancing angle is forty degrees. Okay, and then we are going to use the Bragg's equation again. Okay, so the Bragg's equation is two uh, d sine theta is equal to m lambda, as we have discussed in the earlier problem. So two d sine theta is equal to n lambda, right? So we are going, we are going to calculate here the space again. We are going to calculate d. So two d sine theta. Is equal to n lambda. First, we are going to calculate d, right? So d is equal to n lambda by two sine theta. Okay. So n they have mentioned one lambda they have given three into ten power minus ten meters. Two sine theta theta is given as forty degrees. So we have calculated d, which is two point. So we got d as two point three three into ten power minus ten meters. Okay, so once we get d, we know the relation between d and a interplanar spacing. Okay, so d is equal to a by square root h square plus k square plus l square. Okay, so d is interplanar spacing. So we know what is d. So from this equation, we can write for a. A is equal to d into square root h square plus k square plus l square. Okay, so we know the value of d, 2.33 into 10 power minus 10 meters. So d is value we know into square root h. H is this. H is 1, k is 0, and l is 0. Okay, so we are going to cal get um, uh, a from this equation, right? So yeah, so we get a, and then we are, we need to calculate the volume. Okay, so h is 1. So basically, what we get. D is two point three three into ten power minus ten and square root one square plus zero square plus zero square. So that is one. So that is A is two point three three into ten power minus ten meters. Okay. So now we need to calculate the volume. Volume of a cube. We know volume of a cube is a cube. Volume of a cube is a cube. Whether it is simple cube or it is body centered cube or face centered cube, all the unit cells are going to have the volume which is equal to a cube. So we know a. So then we can calculate a cube. So 2.33 into 10 power minus 10 whole cube. So that is 12.64 into 10 power minus 30 meter cube. So this is the volume. First we have calculated the um, interplanar spacing d. No, sorry. First we have calculated the interplanar spacing d using the Bragg's equation. After that, we have used this d to calculate a lattice parameter, a lattice constant a. Once we got this a, we have calculated volume, which is a cube. Okay. So in this problem also, we have used the Bragg's equation to calculate interplanar spacing as well as volume of the unit cell. So Bragg's equation is uh, very important. So we can use this Bragg's equation to calculate various parameters. Not only d, but we can also calculate lambda. We can also calculate diffraction angle, right? So Bragg's equation is very important. So the next problem in this set is in an X-ray diffraction experiment, peak width at off maximum is zero point six degrees, and its corresponding Bragg's ang Bragg angle is twenty four degrees. Calculate the crystallite size using Scherer's equation. The wavelength used in X-ray diffraction experiment is 1.54 angstrom. Okay, yeah. So yeah. So first they have given it, given that the peak width of maximum, full width. So this is nothing but full width of maximum. Okay. 
So the full width of maximum is given as 0 0.6 degrees and Bragg's angle. Bragg's angle is given as 24 degrees. Calculate the crystallite size. We can calculate the crystallite size using Scherer's equation. Uh, wavelength is also given as 1.5 per angstrom. So always we start with given, given wavelength 1.54 angstrom. So that is 1.54 into 10 power minus 10 meters because one angstrom is 10 power minus 10 meters. So then full width of maximum. So the Scherer's formula is D. Scherer's formula is used to calculate crystallite size. D is equal to K into lambda by B into cos theta B. Okay, so where D is crystallite size, K is Scherer's constant, lambda is wavelength, B is uh, full width of maximum and theta B is the diffraction angle. Okay, so they have given wavelength, right, and the Scherer's constant is 1, K is also known, and then B, B is full, full width of maximum which is 0 0.6 degrees and now we have converted into radians which is 0 0.01 radians. Okay, so that is also done. Then uh, theta b diffraction angle is 24 degrees substituting all these values in this formula we can uh, uh, yeah so we can write down the we can write down the answer here so the d crystallite size is 1.68 into 10 power minus 8 meters okay so i am writing the same answer here okay so the answer is uh, the answer is uh, crystallite size d is crystallite size okay so the crystallite size crystallite size so the crystallite size uh, we found it as 1.68 into 10 power minus 8 meters okay so we have used Scherer's formula right here also I mentioned Scherer's formula we have used to calculate the average crystal size and we inputs given as full width of maximum and diffraction angle and as well as wavelength of the uh, x-rays so this is the third problem uh, in, in so yeah so this is the second set and third problem so let us check the next problem in this set so the next problem in this set is what is the angle at which the third order reflection of x rays of 0 0.79 angstrom wavelength can occur in a calcite crystal of 3.04 into 10 power minus 8 centimeter space okay so, yeah so this is a little bit different but uh, we can uh, understand easily and then we if we understand easily then we can do it uh, solved easily right so they have given they are asking what is the angle at which third order reflection of x rays third order reflection at what angle it occurs with the x rays of given wavelength and in a crystal of given spacing so basically they have given okay what are the inputs they have given they have given wavelength 0 0.79 angstroms okay so one, again and again every problem we are using the angstrom so we should remember one angstrom is 10 power minus 10 meters only then we can solve it easily okay wavelength is given then order of diffraction okay so at which third order reflection occurs so they have mentioned that the order of um, diffraction is third order at this third order and interplanar spacing also they have given interplanar spacing is 3.04 into 10 power minus 8 centimeters because here we are using in meters this also we are going to convert into meters and one centimeter is how many meters 10 power minus 2 meters because one meter is 100 centimeters that means 10 square centimeters okay one meter is 10 square i want one centimeter so that one centimeter is equal to 1 by 10 square meters is equal to 1 centimeter okay so 1 by 10 square is how much 10 power minus 2 meters equal to 1 centimeter okay so 10 power minus 8 into 1 centimeter is 10 power minus 2 meters so that is 10 power minus 10 meters again so we need to calculate the angle so again we are going to use the Bragg's equation so Bragg's equation is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta right so they have given order order is given lambda wavelength is given and they have also given the interplanar spacing we need to calculate theta so now we are going to write sine theta is equal to n lambda by 
2d we want theta so i am writing sin theta is equal to n lambda by 2d and then i can write theta as sin inverse okay so theta as sin inverse of that sin inverse of sin inverse of n lambda by 2d okay so that is what i have written here so i am going to remove this because yeah okay so yeah so n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta then okay let me write this step okay sin theta is equal to n lambda by 2d okay. then theta is sin inverse of n lambda by 2d so n lambda n is given as 3 lambda is given as 0 0.79 into 10 power minus 10 meters divided by 2 into d d is given as 3.04 into 10 power minus 10 meters so substituting all the values we are going to get the angle as 22.94 degree so so this is the angle at which third order reflection of x rays occur in this crystal with a spacing of 3.04 into 10 power minus 8 centimeters. So, this is the fourth problem, I mean, third problem where we have used Bragg's equation. Okay. So, Bragg's equation is very important equation to remember. And using this Bragg's equation, we can calculate various parameters as we uh, did already. In this, in this problem, we have calculated diffraction angle. In other um, uh, problems, we have calculated D. Some problems we also calculated, we can calculate wavelength lambda, we can also calculate order, right? So it's very important to remember this Bragg's equation. Okay, if we know the Bragg's equation, we can solve various problems and to calculate various parameters, for example, order of diffraction, wavelength of the incident light or x-rays, and the interplanar spacing and angle of diffraction. So the uh, fifth problem in this set is that monochromatic x-rays of wavelength, okay, monochromatic x-rays of wavelength uh, 1.5 angstrom units, AU means angstrom units, so you can just take it as a angstroms, okay, lambda is 1.5 angstroms, AU means angstrom units or you can take it as angstroms simply are incident on a crystal phase having an interplanar spacing of 1.6 angstrom units au is angstrom units find the highest order for which bragg's reflection maximum can be seen okay so we are going to find the highest order here we are going to find n okay so from bragg's equation yeah so let us yeah so bragg's equation is now by now we understood bragg's equation is very important to remember because we are using uh, again and again to calculate where various parameters, right? So n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta is the Bragg's equation. Okay. So given, given uh, wavelength lambda uh, 1.5 angstrom units are angstroms, which is 1.5 into 10 power minus 10 meters. One angstrom is 10 power minus. Again, in every problems we are using this angstrom. One angstrom is 10 power minus 10 meters. And interplanar spacing is given uh, as 1.6 angstroms. So one again 1.6 into 10 power minus 10 meters because one star one angstrom is 10 power minus 10 meters. Now again we are going to use this Bragg's equation. So this is the fourth problem where we are using Bragg's equation, right? Out of five problems, four times we have used the Bragg's equation. So Bragg's equation is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta, and our uh, problem here is we need to find the highest order for which Bragg's reflection maximum can be seen. So, IA starter. So, order we need to calculate. So, N we need to find out, right? So, from this equation, we need to write equation for N. So, N is equal to 2D sin theta by lambda. D is they have given 2 into D, 1.6 into 10 power minus 10 and sin theta. Theta they have given as uh, yeah, so they said that maximum reflection, find the highest starter for which maximum reflection occurs. So the maximum reflection occurs at theta is equal to 90 degrees. Only when theta is equal to 90 degrees, maximum can be seen. Maximum reflection can be seen. So this is very important because they have not mentioned what is the angle, but they have mentioned indirectly maximum re reflection can be seen at certain angle. And we know that that angle is 90 degrees. At an angle of 90 degrees only, Bragg's reflection maximum occurs, right? Okay. So, that is why we have taken here theta as 90 degrees, right? So, 2d sin theta by n into uh, lambda. So, lambda is they have given as 1.5 into 10 power minus 10 meters, right? So, substituting all the values, we are going to find the highest order is uh, 2.133 
roughly we are taken as uh, two because the order is always integer so we are um, uh, rounding it off to two so the highest order that we can see uh, in this crystal is second order at 90 degrees of angle okay yeah so here in this problem we have calculated the highest order uh, at which uh, ba Bragg's maximum occurs and uh, the maximum occurs at an angle of 90 degrees and the highest order is two okay so these are some of the textbooks I have used uh, in this presentation and these are the some of the, some of the reference books I have used in this presentation and to summarize uh, first uh, numerical so actually in this presentation I have discussed about numerical problems to set to okay, numerical problems set to on nanotechnology. So first we have started with the um, problem where we have calculated the uh, interplanar spacing right D okay. So we have used Bragg's law in the first problem we have used Bragg's equation to calculate the interplanar spacing or interatomic spacing okay. So Bragg's equation n lambda is equal to 2D sin theta. So using this equation we have calculated D. Okay, so D is equal to n lambda by 2 sin theta. Okay, and the second equation, second problem, so we have various parameters are given, n is given, lambda is given, theta is given, so we have substituted all the values and we got the interatomic uh, distance. So D is interplanar spacing or interatomic distance, interatomic distance. Okay, so that is the pro first problem we have solved using Bragg's equation. Okay, second problem. Second problem also we have used uh, Bragg's equation. Second problem also we have used Bragg's equation if I remember correctly. Bragg's equation again. Bragg's equation again. That is 2D sin theta is equal to n lambda. Okay, so where we have you we have uh, calculated uh, lambda I guess and uh, yeah, so let me go back and see what yeah, so here again Yeah, so we have to first we have calculated the inter interplanar spacing First we have calculated the interplanar spacing again here and then we have calculated the volume Okay Again, we have used in the Bragg's equation to calculate D first Okay so n lambda by 2 sin theta we have calculated d first and then using this d we have calculated a using the relation d is equal to a by square root h square plus k square plus l square so this equation uh, we can write for a a is equal to d into square root h square plus k square plus l square so d we know we have calculated so substituting d and hkl planes are given 100 zero zero plane so h value is 1 k is 0 100 zero 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 plane is given so h k l so then we have calculated a and then we have calculated volume which is a q so that is the second problem and then third problem we have used um, uh, Scherer's equation okay Scherer's equation uh, to calculate uh, uh, average uh, crystallite size k into lambda by b into cos theta b. So we have used Scherer's equation to calculate crystallite size. D is crystallite size. Where k is Scherer's constant, lambda is wavelength, b is um, full width of maximum, b is full width of maximum and theta b is angle of diffraction. Angle of diffraction. Okay, so and fourth problem, uh, and again we have used Bragg's equation in fourth problem. We have used Bragg's equation again and again, again and again, which is uh, n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. Here uh, in the fourth equation, fourth problem, we have calculated theta. Okay, so from this equation, we can write theta, theta as sin inverse n lambda by. 2 into d. So we have calculated the angle of diffraction in the fourth problem. In the last problem, fifth problem, again Bragg's equation. We have used Bragg's equation again and again and again. Okay. So that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta. So here we have calculated n, which is order of diffraction. So that is 2d sin theta by lambda. Okay, so we have cal we have calculated various parameters. Uh, basically, we have used Bragg's equation because Bragg's equation uh, can be used to calculate uh, diffraction, angle, 
uh, interplanar spacing or intermetamic spacing and order of diffraction and wavelength of the instant uh, light right and we have also used Scherer's equation to calculate average crystallite size okay so this is a summary of today's presentation and uh, then i am going to uh, end this presentation and yeah uh, yeah so let me erase all these so we have solved five problems uh, in the second set of on nanotechnology and uh, so we have completed the module uh, nanotechnology also this is the five, fifth module in applied physics and then in the next presentation i will start uh, the discussion on question bank we will discuss various questions we will uh, and we will try to see what uh, what are the answers to the various questions numerical problems and theoretical questions okay. yeah thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates